Hello, thanks for joining us on another Sandia Mountain Natural History Center quick trip. Today, we are in the Rio Grande Bosque. Bosque is a Spanish word for forest or woods, but around here, it means something a little bit special. Let's go check it out. In semi-arid New Mexico, a bosque is an oasis-like ribbon of green forest, often canopy, that only exists near river streams and other water courses. In the bosque near Albuquerque, over 150 types of plants have been identified and over 270 species of birds. This amazing and beautiful ecosystem stretches from Cochiti uh, Lake and Dam up north all the way down to Elephant Butte in the south, about 175 miles. But even with all this unique beauty, this ecosystem is in grave danger. And the reason it's in such danger is because we have changed this ecosystem dramatically. In order to reduce flooding and the ill effects of flooding, we have controlled the river. We've built dams, we've built dikes, and that has reduced flooding, but flooding is kind of the lifeblood of the Bosque ecosystem. So cottonwood trees are what we call phoretophytes. I think I said that right. And what that means is their roots have to be into the water table. They can't be out of the water table for an extended period of time. So what scientists are doing is they're using wells like this. This is a well, and they drop an instrument down there that'll measure the water table. And it's a way that they can measure um, the water table to see if the cottonwoods are gonna be in danger. The camera's not really picking up how many hundreds of ravens there are all around right here. It's like I'm in Alfred Hitchcock movie The Birds. When we're talking about cotton in a cottonwood tree, this is what we're talking about. Here's a whole bunch of build up cotton. So if you come down to the bosque, it's pretty hard to miss this horrible plant. This is salt cedar. And what makes it so horrible is it's an invasive species brought here as an ornamental many years ago, and it's taking over the uh, whole bosque. And as it takes over, it's crowding out native plants, it's growing in dense thickets, creating a forest uh, fire hazard. And one of the things that it also does is it drops these needles, which actually can taste salty, <laughs> makes a thick coating on the ground and chokes out other plants. So this is bad news. There are projects in the works to get rid of this, but it's very tough. It's very resistant to uh, fire, uh, cutting. You pretty much have to pull each and every one of these out to get rid of it. We have a complete video. This one's kind of cool. We look and see some of these blueberries in here. Those are uh, juniper seeds. And then it looks like we have like apricot seeds or something like that in here as well. So this coyote has been eating well. So these big massive cottonwoods are close to the end of their lifespan. And we know that just by the size, but let's take a closer look and see how bad the situation really is. This tree has a diameter of 37 and a half inches across and is 10.8 feet around. That's a big tree and an old tree. Our increment borer is probably not going to be long enough to get a full sample, but it'll be enough to give us a little bit of an idea how old the tree is.
So it's very difficult on the camera to see the rings, but they're a series of light and dark lines. Kind of here where it starts to go dark, we can see one, we can see a good example from here to here and then to here. Each one of those spaces is a year's growth. And on a cottonwood, they're very uniform because the tree is tapped into the water table. So it always has a certain amount of water. So let me uh, get off camera and count and I'll tell you how old this tree is. It's kind of hard to tell on a sample like this because it's wet. It's better to let them dry for a while, but I've counted twice and I'm around 67 or 68 years. So this is a pretty old specimen. Uh, hopefully more cottonwoods will grow from the seeds of this one before this one passes. Been, here's a branch that's been cut and dried and you can see how relatively uniform those rings were. So what's interesting here is the center of the tree is not in the center. That's because the sun would have been up here. So a tree will grow more on the sunny side. But uh, why don't you count the rings and put in the comments how many you counted. And remember, this is just a branch. Most of the cottonwood trees here in the Bosque are mature to what we would call senescent, which is a nice way of saying dying that they're not really productive trees anymore. They're on their way out because they have reached pretty much the end of their lifespan. So that's a major problem. Without new ones growing, all the old ones are dying. And it's one of the biggest reasons why the Bosque is such a threatened ecosystem. One of the things that people like about hiking in the Bosque is areas like this where the growth is super thick and it feels like you're walking through a tunnel. The problem is this is really bad for the bosque. This is a uh, major fire hazard and areas like this should be cleaned out not by fire but by floods. But no floods and these things are allowed to all grow in and become very thick. There are efforts underway to help thin the bosque in places it takes a lot of work and a lot of manpower. So that was the Rio Grande Bosque, one of the more unique ecosystems. Very thin ecosystem, just a few hundred yards wide all along the Rio Grande River through central New Mexico. Now I hope this video didn't seem too negative and down, but it's hard to talk about a place in glowing terms when it's so endangered. But just to leave it on a positive note, there is a lot of work being done to restore the Bosque, to take care of it, and to uh, preserve it for future generations. So hopefully by watching this, maybe you'll be one of those people inspired to help. Thanks for watching, and we will catch you on the next one.